There are five steps for building the EBM process. Number one, constructing a well-built clinical question by breaking down the clinical scenario into the PICO or the PACO. Determining the category of the clinical question. Finding the best evidence in health literature. Critically appraising for validity and usefulness. And evaluating the whole process. How to construct a well-built PICO analysis? The P represents here the patients. What are the primary problems, diseases, or coexisting conditions? How would you describe a group of patients similar to the one in question? Sometimes age or sex or uh, of a patient may be relevant and should be included. I represents the intervention. What event you want to study the effect of? Which main intervention are you considering prescribing a drug, ordering a test, or ordering surgery? C represents the comparison. Compared to what drug are you tackling the other drug with? What is the main alternative to the compare to compare with intervention? Are you trying to decide between two drugs? between a drug and a placebo, between two diagnostic tests, sometimes there's no competitor. For example, if I'm giving an example of otitis media, children, a child, uh, whether I want to give him antibiotics or not, is there evident for me that by giving him antibiotics, he would have better health outcomes? This is a PICO question. So the I here is antibiotics versus the comparator, no antibiotics. What are the outcomes? It's what's the effect of the intervention? What do you hope to accomplish, measure, improve or affect with this intervention? What are you trying to do for the patient? What are you relieving or eliminating the symptoms? Are you reducing the side, the side effects? Are you reducing the cost? After asking a well-built structured clinical question, that should be directly relevant to the problem at hand and should be paraphrased to facilitate the searching for a precise answer. We should then determine the category of the clinical question. There are four main ones, the therapy, diagnosis, etiology, and prognosis. In the therapy, the question solves the, it solves the question about which treatment to administer and what might be the outcome of different treatment options. For most therapy questions, one may want to look for the best evidence, namely a randomized controlled study. And if the study is double blind, that would be even more better. Diagnosis solves the questions about degree to which test is reliable and clinically useful. After comparing the results of a diagnostic test with that of a standard test regarded as the gold standard, in etiology, it solves the problem about the relationship between a disease and possible cause. For example, if you want to find out if a diet rich in saturated fats increases the risk of heart disease, and so, and if, if so, by how much, this is an etiology question. Prognosis answers the questions about patients' future health, lifespan, and quality of life in the event one chooses a particular treat treatment option. For example, if I want to find how would the quality of life change for a patient who undergoes surgery for prostate cancer? This is a prognosis question. Now, each category of clinical question is best answered by a specific study design. So, for, for example, therapy is best uh, answered by randomized controlled trials and systematic reviews. What are randomized controlled trials? In randomization, it avoids the selection bias. It's a study that has two groups, a treatment and a control group. The treatment group receives the treatment under investigation and the control group receives a placebo. And then both groups are followed up. What about the cohort case studies or the case studies? that uh, the etiology question answers best, that answer best the etiology question. The cohort study is defined by population that are followed in an attempt to determine distinguishing subgroup categories, 
characteristics. Researchers identify and compare two groups over a period of time. One of the groups has a particular condition or receives a particular treatment, and the other does not. At the end of the specified time, researchers compare the two groups to see how they did. The case control study are the studies or studies are the studies that identify patients who already have the outcome of interest and control patients without the outcome and look back to see if they had exposure of interest or not. As for the prognosis, the follow-up of inception cohort. Also case series or case reports can, can answer all as well prognosis etiology or therapy questions, but not as heavily as these best study designs. But let's just have a look on what do they mean. They construct either of collections of reports on treatments of individual patients or of reports of single patients. Where do I look for, which literature should I be looking for to me to get the best literature on evidence? Textbooks is one, one source. Streptokinase decreases mortality in patients with acute myocardial infarction. 33 trials done in 1955 through 1988 favoring the treatment. In spite of this, in 1983, only a third of textbooks even mentioned thrombolytic therapy. So that's how reliable textbooks as evidence are. Another source is practice guidelines. They are systematically developed statements to assist practitioner and patient decisions about appropriate or the best health care for specific clinical circumstances. Guidelines may be developed by government agencies, institutions, organizations such as professional societies, or by the convening of expert panels, according to GUIAD User Guides in 2002. A third way to look up evidence-based literature is the secondary publications. Recall in the SML uh, session, one of the services that we provide at SML is providing you with weekly, not us actually, it's evidence update master, by the weekly uh, emails of the updated clinically significant secondary form papers. What do I mean by secondary form paper? Authors take data from previously published studies, they summarize, analyze, critically appraise, and draw a conclusion to it. It is like a journal publication in one page. Where do I find these secondary publications? ACP Journal Club, Evidence-Based Medicine, which includes 50 journals of all subjects, Evidence-Based Cardiovascular Medicine, Mental Health, so on and so forth. Systematic review is the third way to look up information about evidence-based medicine. There are high-quality, up-to-date reviews written by experts who use rigorous methods to identify all original research studies, including gray literature, structured around a focused, clearly formulated question. They appraise and critically evaluate every paper reviewed in a systematic and consistent method. It's intended to help decision-makers cope with large volume of literature by summarizing reliable research evidence. Many original studies are sponsored by companies. Studies that find unfavorable negative results are far less likely to be published. Both the journal will not publish and the pharmaceutical company that paid huge or humongous amount of money will not identify that there is negative results. Authors report false findings if based on ineffective search strategy may have serious negative consequences for patients. Screeners, screening together, is uh, there's a human error of not understanding clearly the inclusion-exclusion criteria. That's why critical appraisal 
of research studies are still evolving and by no means flawless. Systematic reviews, like all work, can be varying quality as well. But the, it is the high level of evidence. With meta-analysis, it's the highest level of evidence in the EBM pyramid, which gonna be, which we're going to be seeing in a while. It's a systematic review that uses quantitative statistical methods to summarize in single numerical estimates the results of research. When results of all included studies are similar enough statistically, they are combined and analyzed as if they were one study. This increases the power of finding that are individually too small to produce reliable results. So as you can see, the background information or the expert opinion textbooks lies in the bottom of the evidence-based pyramid. It is the most common one. It has the, the biggest foundation or the most amount of in, in terms of quantity, but it is the least in evidence. As we go up, the quality of evidence increases. The nice thing that I have collected in this lip guide is that upon clicking on any of the following, you will be directed to where you find results on this specific evidence uh, form. For example, if I clicked on background information and expert opinion, you can find evidence from up to date from ebooks. If I go back again and look up if I want case control studies and case series reports, PubMed is another one, Ovid Medline. Embase, PsycInfo, and Sinal. Going up, cohort studies again. PubMed, Embase, PsycInfo, and Sinal. Randomized control studies in these three databases as well. Have you noticed here unfiltered and filtered information? What do I mean by that? The unfiltered information is not critically appraised information. However, the filtered information are analyzed and they are critically appraised. Chip database is one free database unless you want to upgrade it that covers both unfiltered and filtered information together. Up to date and dynamite also lie here. They have critically appraised topics and articles. Meta analysis is on the top of the pyramid. Examples of critically appraised individual articles are from Dynamed, Evidence Alerts, and Evidence-Based Cardiovascular Medicine. As I mentioned before, they can also have secondary papers, journal evidence-based dental, so on and so forth. Critically appraised topics or evidence, Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, it's an open access database, which is freely present for public clinical knowledge summaries, Dynamite as well, up-to-date as well, and systematic reviews. Where do we find them? In the Cochrane Library, it consists of detailed structured topic reviews of hundreds of articles. Team of experts complete comprehensive literature reviews, evaluate the literature, and present summaries of the finding of the best studies. Also, you can find systematic reviews in Medline, PubMed, Embase, Sinan, and more. We have completed now knowing where to look up literature. Let's apply it in the coming video.